Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to set up a item collection in Inventory Pro. So in this tutorial we're quickly going to set up any collection. So in this case we're going to use an inventory collection but the setup usage for a bank or a vendor or a loot chest is pretty much the same. So for now we're just going to go with an inventory. So I'm going to create a new uh, game object. There we go. Drag it into our canvas, which is our canvas. And I'm just going to place it around here and call this our inventory collection. Go to add component, then inventory pro. And we have, let's see, Windows inventory. And this adds a bunch of components already. So we get an animator, which we can use to animate our window. Then we have the UI window component. This contains uh, some basic information about the window itself. So we can add uh, animations showing hiding animations. We can add audio clips when the window is shown and hidden. We have Unity actions that we can use. Um, and finally, we have an input handler. So I'm just quickly going to name this inventory. And then on our input handler, we can click add module. And here we can choose a UI window rewired input handler in case you have rewired. So if this doesn't show up, uh, you'll probably only see UI window input handler. So for now, we're just going to use this, the regular input handler. And we can choose a key code that we need to press in order for the window to show. So I'm just going to choose I for inventory. And then finally, we have the actual collection itself, so the inventory collection. We can choose to use references. This basically means that all the items inside of it actually reside into a different collection. Um, this would be useful for a skill bar if you want to ref reference the items inside of the skill bar. We can ignore item layout sizes. This means that if we have an item, for example, let's see, our boots, that take up uh, two in the width and one in the height, uh, when we ignore the item layout sizes, they will always just be forced to a size of one by one. Then we have the item button prefab. This is essentially an override that we can use to change out the slot um, that contains all of the items. So if we go to settings real quick, we have a default prefab that we use for all of our uh, slot collections, but we can also override it if we would want to do so. But in most cases, you'll want to leave this blank. Now we have the container. This is where all of these slots and items will be stored. So we want to create a empty game object and we'll use this as our container. So as you can see, we immediately get a warning that it does not have a dynamic layout group component attached to it. So if we go here, we can add our dynamic layout group and we can set the cell size, which is the size for uh, every item inside of the collection. Uh, by default, this is 50 by 50, and we can add some spacing, like 3 by 3. All right. There we go. We can choose to manually define the collection, which means that we can directly add slots inside of this collection. If we leave it off, it will automatically generate the collection for us. Then we have a sorting button that we can assign, which when clicked will sort the entire inventory. We have a scroll rect, which we can uh, use to, to scroll the actual inventory if we have a very long list. We can share the collection, which basically means that if we have multiple players, we can share this collection between all of those players. Then we can set a collection priority, which basically means that if we have multiple collections, we can choose where the item should be stored first. Uh, and I'll explain that a bit more in a second. We have the initial collection size this is the size of the inventory when we generate the entire uh, entire collection. Use item move to bank which means if the bank window is open and the user uses an item it will actually move to the bank collection and we have the same thing for selling. Then we have some audio clips. These are pretty self-explanatory. Um, then we have restrictions that we can use. So we could say this collection is only allowed to have items that are, let's say, equipable. So now this collection will only be able to contain equipable inventory items and all the other items will be ignored. And you can combine this with collection priority. So say you have 
one collection that can only contain, contain uh, equipable items. Then we set the priority to maybe 70. We create another collection that can contain any item and then all of our equipable items will first go into this collection because it has a higher priority. But for now, I'm just going to leave it blank. Um, we can restrict this collection by weight, so that way um, with all the items accumulated in this collection you're never allowed to exceed a hundred of weight. If it can contain con currencies, can drop from the collection, can use from the collection, we probably want that in this case. If we can use items from a reference, which means that if a reference is referring to this item, can that reference use this item? So if the item's in a skill bar, it is referring to the original item, for example, in the inventory. When the reference is used, can the item in the inventory also be used? So this is an extra restriction that we can use. Uh, the reason this is useful is if you have a bank collection and an item in the skill bar is referring to an item in the bank, you probably don't actually want it to be usable. Um, in which case, you can use or uncheck this, in which case it won't be actually be usable uh, from the skill bar. Uh, if we can drag the item inside of the collection, if we can put items inside of it, if we can stack inside of it and unstack. Okay, so we've now set up our container, which is the most important part, um, and we attach the dynamic layout group. So I'm just going to disable the original inventory windows that come with it automatically so they don't pop up. So right now we have our inventory collection, however it doesn't have any visuals yet. We won't be able to see it because we haven't attached any images or any any background. So I'm going to add an image and we have a default window background texture. We can set this to tiles field actually. All right. I'm just going to set the scale to 1, not sure why that was so big. Okay. And let's make it 200. Let's start the game. So now when I press I, the window will show up. Our slots are actually very big. I can't drag the window and if I click items, it says my inventory is full. So let's fix that. If we go to our player, we can see that we have inventory collections. These are the player's collections. Right now they're still referring the old collections I already had in a demo scene. So I'm just going to remove those and add our own collection. So now this collection belongs to this specific player, which is what we want. Alright, now let's also make sure that um, the slot sizes are um, at the size we want it to be. So I'm just gonna make sure that the, um, let's call this the container. The container stretches to the size of the parent. So in this case, the container uh, will be the same size as the window itself. And let's see, size set to 50, seems okay. Let's try it out. And to fix the size, I actually move the object back uh, way too far, or forward to the camera, which scales it up, which wasn't too clever. So I'm just going to put that back, make sure that the z-axis is on zero. And then the size of the default is 40 by 40, and let's leave the spacing at zero. Okay. So now we have our collection. The uh, window is not really wide enough. So let's fix that real quick. 250, and then we can give a little bit of uh, extra padding here by setting the box. There we go. All right. And now if we click on an item, they will go right into our collection. Oops. 
Um, but we can still can't drag the actual window. But we can fix this. We can simply add a draggable window, which allows us to drag the window around. All right, that's it for this one. Um, if you'd like to request any tutorials, be sure to do so on the DevDoc forums. Uh, I'd love to make more of these. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see. All right, see you in the next one.